right. So what about that 3 30, uh, 3 30 PM Eastern time kickoff from Knoxville, Tennessee had last week off, uh, Texas A&M loses close to Alabama at home. Um, I'm ex, uh, bud, why, why don't you get us started? What, what, which, which piece of this do you want to, um, are you most interested in? How, how much A&M can bounce back? Like that, you're you're getting Tennessee off a bye, Tennessee getting healthier, you know, right tackles back, centers back. Milton has obviously had a number of injury stuff. If you watch him, like the, his scrambles against South Carolina had no juice. Like I'm I'm convinced he was hurt, like more hurt than than they really let on. Getting him another week to rest up, but man, like the Texas A&M pass protection uh, was was pretty poor at home against Alabama. And uh, we've seen them have big-time breakdowns in, in, in pass pro on the road before. Tennessee has some real juice rushing the passer this year. And I I, uh, I retract my statements on Max Johnson. Like, I, I really thought that he was going to be okay. And now I'm, I'm grading him as a major downgrade from Wegman. Like, I, I don't like how he protects the football. I, I don't like how he protects his body. Like, he's, like, out there, like, like diving and, like, like, taking really unnecessary hits. I'm like, bro, I, I don't know who the third stringer is for A&M. But he's probably off like almost every team's third stringer. <laughs> Did you hear Brad say that on the call? No, uh, I, I, because it, it was it was Brad and Gary on the call last week for Alabama A and M. Yeah, yeah. Brad yeah. was like, the way the young man's out there, you need to remind him there's not another backup ready to go. Like just sitting there, <laughs> allowing himself to get crushed. Yeah, I, I thought he's gonna have to speed up his internal play yeah. clock like every quarterback they talk about a clock that you have to be able to feel when you have to get rid of the football i was kind of blown away it was taking him a long time the clock needs to speed up and that's probably from not playing for a while i thought he played pretty good in the first half and the second half when the protection got you know uh really broke down it was evident but i also thought his coaching staff didn't do any favors by getting away from some of the play action pass and running the football the way they did in the first half um so i think that like i almost feel like this is one where as good as Bobby Petrino has been, I've liked the addition of him. Like, do you go back to the Jimbo? Let's slow this thing down. Let's keep it out of Tennessee, who goes at the fastest pace of anybody in college football. You take the, you try to take the crowd out of the game by long, sustained drives, and you try to keep them off the field. Like, I and you protect your quarterback that way. Hey, like, DJ you, Durkin you know, is and, begging for that. DJ Durkin yeah. is like, please do not put our defense. <laughs> back on the field already as bud mentioned earlier the past defense has just gotten picked apart on deep shots this is the worst possible matchup if you're if your weakness is sticking with wide receivers on deep plays down the field i i think part of the reason texas a&m struggles to keep its offense on the field and i mean like when you power rate teams there there are a lot of numbers you look at and bud i'm sure you're the same way here it First and second down to me are more important offensively than what you're doing on third and fourth down because I think you set yourself up on first and second down to be successful on third or fourth down. Texas A&M's offense on first and second down has been terrible all season long. They have put themselves in third and longs continuously, and that is part of the reason why, whether it's Connor Wegman or Max Johnson, you're seeing them back there forever waiting, getting hit because they've got to wait for Jimbo's 15 different route combinations to come open at any given time. And that's impacted them. And I think, like, Bud, you're talking about this Tennessee pass rush. I think going on the road against this Tennessee defense, this offense needs to figure something out on first and second down to put itself in better positions or else they're going to be digging themselves out of a hole. But at the same time, I do think Tennessee's offense has been very – it's explosive-ish. It is nothing like the offense we saw last year. It is very sure. hit or miss. It is – Joe Milton is – like we, we've spent so much time talking about Jalen Milrow this season because of Alabama's quote-unquote quarterback controversy and Milrow getting benched for the week. But Joe Milton – I would rather have Jalen Milrow than Joe Milton. I, I think they're pretty much the same guy for the most part, except I think I'd rather have Milrow's running ability. So Milton needs to find some consistency because, yeah, there are shots you can take against this Texas A&M defense, but you have to hit them. And I've seen Milton miss too many of them this year that I don't have the utmost confidence. Like, I, I don't really have a great lean in this game because of that. And I think this is one that could go any way. And I think it's really just going to come down to 
as simple as it sounds. Which quarterback plays better? Whichever <laughs> quarterback plays better, that team is going to win. That's just how I feel about this one. And just protects the ball because you're going to get sacked. I mean, both these teams are top three in the country in sacks. Like, they're getting pressure. Um, Texas A&M getting 17.6% uh, um, uh, success rate getting to the QB. Like, they are hitting the court. So both yeah. of these quarterbacks are going to have to deal with some adversity. And it's like, which one do you trust better? I, the Texas A&M secondary is a problem, you know, yeah. but if you're I, DJ Durkin, do you, do you just say, let's get after it? Let's like, cause if you don't, cause I thought they, again, I thought they did better in the first half, getting pressures, being more aggressive. And then when they played a little bit softer and tried to get home with four, they didn't get the pressure and their secondary can't cover. They can't cover that long. I agree with that for sure. I I have concerns about DJ Durkin against these up tempo offenses. The last time we really saw them play one was last year at home against against Lane, and Lane clowned him. I mean that that was not a good Ole Miss offense last year, and it was just they were helpless. He just out schemed them like crazy. Uh, I. That's probably the closest thing they've seen in terms of spreading the field width wise and going tempo. Like, not that Lane is running the, the beer and shoot stuff, but uh, the last time we saw AM try to play this type of offense, they handled it really poorly. I, I would make them prove it to me that they can do it in Chapel Hill on Saturday night. Hype meets the Hurricanes, Danny. Like for we can get or if you want to jump on the like how does Miami respond from being embarrassed if that's the thing that stands out the most to you definitely uh, dive in but you know, where are you seeing this matchup which you know according to the odds here like if you were to go vibes alone North Carolina would be a fourteen point favorite but guess what yeah. vibes uh, vibes don't make the numbers this is a this is a even competitive game between two teams that especially offensively can go out there and score and have proven that so far this year. What are you looking at in the North Carolina Miami showdown? You know what the odds makers do? They ignore a knee that wasn't taken, right? They don't, yeah. they're like, hey, that team should have won that game. You know, it doesn't bother them. Now the vibes come in. Where is your team emotionally, mentally coming in from that one? Um, I think it's gonna be a fun game. I think there's a huge opportunity for Miami to bounce back and like put, get that bad taste out of their mouth. Drake May is playing better this season than he did last year. The numbers aren't as good. I mean, his last this game against Syracuse was his best performance all around. Uh, and statistically, it started to catch up. You know, where, where before that, I think he was five touchdowns, four interceptions. It just yeah. looked kind of blah. But he even in those games, if you watch the decision-making he was getting, my, the one thing that's kind of interesting is North Carolina has not been running the ball great. They had the one outlier game. And they have not been able to run the football much. So I feel like this game could have an even more of a Drake May has to take over type because Miami's defensive line is still pretty good. Um, and then on the flip side, North Carolina's defense is better. And you talk about vibes. Like, it's a good thing we're talking about the knee at the end of the game because Tyler Van Dyke did not look good at all against Georgia Tech. Like, he needs to have the big bounce back game uh, for them. So I think Lance Guidry, I think this, I think this Hurricanes defense is really good. The secondary got exposed a little bit late in that game. I think I, this is one like there's. I feel I have a I have less feel for this week as far as the big games of like who I feel really good about than almost any week we've done. I think 